Bob, in thinking about our universe in what seems to be an extraordinarily fine-tuned universe where lots of the constants of physics have to be just so, many physicists, cosmologists talk about multiple universes and a so-called anthropic principle that w would select out of all these multiple universes only that which human beings could evolve because life is possible and therefore we're an observer to see it. Uh, what do you make of this argument which has become very widespread, very controversial? I think it's very amusing. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, of course, the larger idea is also very ancient. It's Hindu. It's Hindu cosmology. But more importantly, this entire idea is not science because it fundamentally deals with something that you can't measure. Now, almost by definition. Almost by definition. Now, how that could happen, how scientists could segue into talking about things that aren't measurable uh, is very interesting. It's an interesting sociological phenomenon, but let's just say so as to not cause fights, um, a lot of us don't want to do that. I personally think that as a scientist, I have no right to speculate about things like that in any way different from anyone else because it doesn't deal with experimental facts. My only expertise is with experiments. So, uh, I suppose there might have been other universes, and I suppose uh, you could imagine that the one we're in, we're in it because we're because it's the best for us. But we're not having discussion about anything I know how to um, ex experiment about. So I think I might just go watch television. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a real problem that this purportedly has to answer because you're not willing to accept this as a as 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 a, as a, a method methodology of thinking, you you have to have your own kind of answer to explain the fine tuning of the universe because that's that's a pretty much a fact that if the constant of physics were many of them quite uh, 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 just a little bit different, we wouldn't have a universe, wouldn't have galaxies or whatever. So you have to explain that one way or another. Yeah. See. Um... I, I, I am, sound like I'm not listening to you, but I really am. There's a logical flaw in this argument about cause and effect. Okay? We want to understand what causes things, why the universe is the way it is. And the answer in this case, pr proposed answer, is that it's because it's congenial. Now, this question is a wonderful and fascinating piece of philosophy, but it isn't physics. Why? Because physics is actually a very humble thing. Physics is an experimental discipline. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? And therefore, uh, we're, we're imagining what might have happened beyond the place we can measure. Now, um, you say we must have answers to that question, I take issue with that. I live every day with many, many questions I cannot answer. They're very easy to pose. The art of good science is to pose questions that can be answered and answered definitively so that if you propose an answer and it isn't correct, you're struck out mm -hmm. as wrong. This class of idea uh, can't. And therefore, it isn't science. And therefore, my, uh, my answer to you is that my advice to you as a citizen of the world is don't worry about that. Worry about other things, things that you can falsify and really know. Well, I have to say, I, I cannot not worry about that. I am worried about it, and it's something that concerns me, and I have to deal with it now. Let's start with the, 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 the apparent fact that there is fine-tuning, that many of the laws of physics have to be within a very close tolerance or we wouldn't be here. Now, either that's right or not, and most scientists would say that it, it is indeed right. So we have to explain that 
Or if we say we can't, we can't. But even if, if we can't approach it experimentally, let's at least set out what the possible hypotheses would be. Let, let's list all the possible ways to explain it, and at least from the collective wisdom of Robert, human... I'm sorry to interrupt, but remember I remarked about Hindu cosmogony? Yeah. Why don't we consider that too? Uh, may, maybe we should. Indeed, maybe we should, in which case we're having a religious discussion, not a physics discussion. Well, now, I love, I love religious discussions, and I'm happy to engage in them, but I don't want to mix them up with science. It's uh, a different thing. Yeah, well, I, I, I think we, we have to approach it scientifically. If we have religion, we, have, we, we, we can have an infinite number of ways to explain things. Yes. And if we're dealing in science, at least from a scientific method, we should try to array the kinds of explanations. Now, let me give you what I think would be, to be simple, three kinds of explanations for the, for the fine-tuning of the universe, one of which would be a religious one, whether you want to pick a, a Hindu cosmogony or a Judeo-Christian, whatever you want, that's one category, that something else did it. Category two is that ultimately we'll find one set of laws of physics that it could only be that way by, by force, and, and you'd see it, and, and it's impossible to be some other way, so therefore there's nothing beyond that to explain, which many scientists would like, but, but right now it seems like that's very difficult to, to achieve. And the third are multiple universes, so that you don't have to worry about either one of the first two, you don't like the first because it's religious, many scientists would feel, and the second looks like it's impossible. And so therefore you're left with the third, which is multiple universes. What do you think of that array of possibilities? Uh, you know, Robert, I'm not trying to be flip. I just gave you the correct answer at the beginning. I think it's amusing. Uh, you know, uh, the idea that the, the constants of the universe are, are finely tuned to make things congenial for us is in fact a, an artificial creation of the mind. There's nothing natural about it at all. It's, it's a modeling conundrum. Now, nature does a lot of wonderful things. We have water flowing on the planet, okay? We have these lovely flowers, right? Now, are those things exist to make it congenial for us? Well, I suppose they might. Uh, in another universe, maybe there wouldn't be any grass. Okay, okay, we'd have buildings instead of nice streams. I don't know. Um, the premise of the question is false. The premise of the question is that this is a scientific issue, and it isn't. I think to array the possibilities of science, you may not be able to discern the answer because you can't experiment, I'll grant you that. But the ability to logically array the possibilities that are possible explanations is a, 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 an employment of the scientific way of thinking. No, I understand that, but as I like to emphasize, there are many, many questions scientifically you can ask that can't be answered experimentally. Okay, I think that's a legitimate point. And the art of understanding your world is to eschew that and to ask the questions that can be experimental, falsified. And what you'll find is you're led to miracles vastly greater than the ones you can imagine. So in summary then, my response to the anthropic uh, ideas is that they're very, very interesting, like, like uh, many other religious ideas, and uh, I, I pay attention to them, but when I really want to understand the universe, I walk away from those questions towards questions that have concrete experimental answers.